I make tiny handcrafted films, uh, mostly by myself, uh, mostly about war and racism. Um, in 1946, in Dothan, Alabama, my great-grandfather, S.E. Branch, murdered a man named Bill Spann, and my Creative Capital Project has been investigating that murder to the best of my ability, and so I'm going to show you uh, two fragments of the fine cut of that film. was actually sort of concerned this would happen. This is the first thing that I sent in, so there actually is no voiceover in this. Um, so I'm gonna grab my computer and I'm gonna do some live voiceover. This is what happens when you move from Los Angeles day before yesterday. Okay, this won't take me but a second. It will just feel like an eternity. I don't even know if I can find it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tell you personally what happened here. I spent the last three years trying to figure out what happened in 1946 when my great-grandfather, who was a member of the Klan, he was a very uh, well-connected man in Dothan, Alabama, and he seemed to get away with many things, with rape, with murder of several people. And in 1946, he murdered a man named Bill Spann. Um, it has been extremely difficult for me to find anything out about that man. I've been going for three years uh, on and off down to Alabama, and this is what it led me to. It led me to an unmarked grave in a, in a tiny graveyard uh, in a place called Louisville, Alabama, which has a population of 519, and it's the closest I have come to a concrete answer about what happened when this man was murdered by my great-grandfather. And the reason this has a kind of uh, interesting significance to me, it's a very unsatisfying narratively, right? Um, it is, it's not an adequate answer because we, we seek sort of narrative closure. Um, what happened? What happened to this other family? What were the consequences for them? I know what the consequences for, for me were. The consequences for them were that apparently their entire family was erased more or less. And I found myself being struck by the incredible expression of the actual consequences of racism in U.S. society when you imagine that I am shooting this sequence on the road, for example, with a very nice camera, uh, using my grant that I got from here, which I am grateful for, um, to try to express the reality of another family that was entirely erased. And the distance between those two realities, a reality of a family full of doctors and professors, and the reality of a family that has more or less been erased from history, tells you something about the actual material power and horror of racism in U.S. society. And that's what I've been trying to explore with my film.